Hey everybody, it's Carrie, and this is going to be my first video in my series of cooking and baking hacks that I hope will save you time, effort, and maybe can help you make an amazing recipe that you truly like. Now, this first recipe is not going to maybe save you as much time, but it's going to give you what I think is an amazing dessert that I've had other people tell me is really, really good. And so this is gonna be ooey gooey cheesecake brownies. Now I am using a box mix, so that is the hack right there, is not to make it all from scratch. That is way too much trouble and does take more time. But I will be making the cheesecake portion from scratch, and the cheesecake portion only has three ingredients. That's cream cheese, one egg, and some powdered sugar. And so I just go according to the box mix with one exception when it calls for oil I will use butter instead and these brownies I think are amazing let me know if you try them I would love to hear from you and how you liked them so I hope you enjoy These are the ingredients I use for the ooey gooey cheesecake brownie. So I do use a box mix. This is what makes it so easy is just use the box mix. And my favorite for these extremely ooey gooey ones are the Ghirardelli dark chocolate ones. And they do have chocolate chips in the, the batter or the mixture. Now the one big difference, let me see if I can get this to focus on the instructions. Um, it does say use a half a cup of vegetable oil. I don't do that. I use a stick of butter. So this is a half a cup of basically uh, fat, <laughs> oil if you wish, grease, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's not sounding appealing at all now, is it? Um, so what I do is just melt this in the microwave and I use that in place of my oil. And there's going to be one egg and also a fourth of a cup of water mixed into that. Now for the cheesecake portion, I've got one brick or whatever you want to call this little container of cream cheese. It's just eight ounces of cream cheese one egg and I am using confectioner sugar or powdered sugar now it's going to take almost um, 16 ounces I think this is 16 but uh, these are the ones that I've used in the past where I haven't used the entire bag so I basically almost have the equivalent of a full bag so I didn't want to open a brand new bag so um, the thing about it is with the cheesecake portion I'll be honest with you guys I really just eyeball it I've never measured it out but it takes about roughly three-fourths of a bag so what I generally do is just open it up dump it in see what the consistency looks like so it's really completely just eyeballed here sorry about not having the complete measurements for the cheesecake portion but I am going to start with that first so I'm going to mix that up and the main reason I do that is for the the basically the beater things uh, whatever those the mixer is that um, I will wash them off but I like to go for the lighter colored mixture and then the darker colored mixture. It's just what I do. You don't have to do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the cheesecake up first. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put this Philly uh, cream cheese into uh, my bowl right here and mix that up. This has been sitting out for a few hours so it can come up to room temperature and it softens up. It would be kind of difficult in my opinion to mix this um, up when it just when it's right out of the refrigerator. If you're used to doing anything with cream cheese you will understand that. And so you can scrape this off if you choose to do so. I'm not going to bother right now. Let me grab the mixer. as I'm concerned I'm gonna go ahead and add an egg into it and a good practice is to always crack your egg into a bowl first or some sort of container and then put it in so you don't get any shell but I'm gonna be brave and not do that and hope for the best 
no egg. That's one thing about using a brown shelled egg. You can see if it's in your mixture. And you definitely would want to scrape the sides down. So I'm going to grab a spatula and do that. This one has a dachshund with roller skates on it. And if you're curious where this one came from, I got it at Anthropology. One thing I forgot to add as an ingredient is I like to do about a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm hoping that is focusing in. This is the brand that I get. Use whatever brand that you want. So I really just pour it into the cap and then just put it in there. You may be able to hear Coco whining at the door. I need to go let her out. She wants to go on the deck right now. And I'm like, Coco, I'm cooking. So I'm going to mix this in and then start adding that powdered sugar. At this point, I would say, it's hard to get this on camera, but by the angle that I've got this at, let me back this up a little bit. So I would say I probably have a third of the bag left of this powdered sugar. I'm going to dump this whole bag in here in the bowl, mix it up and see what we look like. And then if I feel like I need more, I'll grab that other bag that's probably about a third. Start your mixer off slowly when you've got um, a very fine powder like that powdered sugar or else you'll end up wearing it. Or if you're making something with flour, start off slowly too. We are almost at the consistency that I need. I'm going to do a little bit more powdered sugar and it really just depends on how soft your cream cheese is. Um, I would not suggest putting it in the microwave or anything like that, um, but if you do happen to get it really, really soft and it's almost a liquid, um, you've gone too far, put it back in the refrigerator. I'm going to add a little bit more of the this powdered sugar in the second bag right now, and I'm just going to eyeball it a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit at a time. I don't think I'm going to need all of it. We're getting very close to the consistency. You just don't want it too liquidy. Okay, I'm going to do just a little bit more. We are almost there. You know what? I'm just going to do the whole bag. So I'm going to say about two thirds of a 16 ounce bag, whatever that equals to be. I don't know. Oh, and I also forgot, preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I am using the convection oven, so you can probably hear a fan running. I'm, I'm not sure what 325 is in Celsius, but you can Google it. Okay, we are at definitely at the consistency. I'm just scraping the bowl down. At this point, I'm going to set this aside, clean these off right here, and then start making the brownie batter. I have a different bowl for the brownie batter, and I'm going to take my one egg and go ahead and deal with it first. And again, uh, it probably would have been a better idea to use another container to break the egg into, but since it was the very first thing that I'm going to do with this, I didn't think it was that big a deal and I could um, get the shell out if I'd accidentally dumped it in there. So I do like to mix the egg up first and beat this egg before I add anything else. It's just a personal preference for me. So next, you can either do one of two things. 
or maybe even three things. You can add your water next, you can add the brownie mix, or you can add your melted butter. Now, depending on the temperature of the egg when you put it in this bowl will depend on when you want to add that melted butter or the temperature of the butter. And what I mean by that is I don't want to add hot melted butter to a cold egg. I'm going to get scrambled eggs potentially. So what I generally like to do is get the egg at room temperature, but if you don't wait, that is fine. Just go with the maybe the brownie mix or the water next. So what I'm going to do is actually go with the brownie mix next. My eggs had been sitting out for a little while, but they were still cold. So I just don't want to get um, basically curdled eggs. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add my melted butter. I just melted it in the microwave. Let me get some of this off. All right, and now I'm going to get one fourth cup of water. Spilled a little bit of it, but I think we're okay. So I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to get another spatula if I can find it. I think it's clean. Yes. And scrape the bowl down. And I'm also going to get this little piece of butter right there. It is my personal opinion that Ghirardelli does the best brownie mix. I absolutely love their brownie mix. If you don't happen to have a hand mixer or a big stand mixer, you can of course do this by hand. I don't recommend it because I'm a little bit lazy about that, but you could mix this by hand if you want to. It looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and get my baking dish out and pour the brownie mixture into it. This dish size is an 8 by 8. I do think a 9 by 9 would be a better option for this because we're going to be pretty full right here. And you may not need all of that cheesecake mixture. We shall see. This was the butter wrapper that I had just um, set aside. And what I do right here is just use whatever's left on this wrapper and just coat the baking dish. I haven't had anything really stick in the past when I haven't done this, but I just utilize it since it's right here. I'm going to pour the brownie mixture in here. I'm just spreading it out. I've got my cheesecake mixture right here. I'm just getting a spoon out. You can do this with that little measuring cup that I use to get the water in here and the brownie mixture or you can just grab a spoon, whatever you got. And I'm just making different, there's no rhyme nor reason how I just put it on there. I'm just trying to coat the surface and then I'm going to grab like a butter knife and swirl it around. And this is really too much mixture, honestly, for this size pan. It would be great for two packs of brownies, or two containers of brownies, two boxes of brownies. I grabbed this knife that I had earlier, and this is what I'm doing. I'm just swirling the mixture around. And I do like to be able to see some of the chocolate through it. And I personally always like a little bit of extra of the cheesecake mixture, so I just add some more. So I am using most of it, but you don't have to use this much. This is just what I like. 
Then I'm going to swirl this around again. And I'm going to bake this at 325 degrees for at least a minimum of like 30 minutes. I always do like the, um, I don't have any toothpicks, but you know what I'm saying, the toothpick test. I'll probably just use another knife, stick it in there, see if it comes out clean. I will tell you, what generally happens with me is the around the edges will come out clean, but the center of it is going to be extremely gooey, which is what I love. Um, so we'll take a look at it when it is about 30 minutes from now. I just took it out of the oven and I did turn the overhead light so I think that's a little bit better natural lighting is coming in from the window now as you can see I'm trying to get out of the way so my shadow doesn't get on it um, it is getting done around the edges but let me shake it just a little bit I'm gonna put on this oven mitt it's a Mickey Mouse hands yes I love Disney cooking stuff and so I don't know if you can see that probably not but it's still pretty jiggly in the middle I personally don't think it is done enough and it has been in there actually about 40 minutes uh, 39 minutes so if this would have been a bigger pan it would definitely be done right now and the edges are definitely done um, one other thing while I'm thinking about it I'm gonna put this back in the oven this mixture that you've got on top if you've ever had a chest square or sometimes they're called gooey butter bars that's pretty much what this cheesecake mixture is on top but because I swirled it in it's definitely more cheesecake brownies in my opinion um, or you can say you have brownie chest squares um, you can see the oh I don't want to mess that up it's definitely bubbling up a little bit but the line down here where that mixed in so it didn't get all the way mixed in but that's okay just however you want to do it so I'm gonna put this in I think maybe 10 more minutes so all in total we're gonna be close definitely to 50 minutes um, getting close to an hour so I'll check back in with you. I ended up leaving it in the oven just about 50 minutes and currently it has been sitting on the stove top probably for 20 25 minutes I'm just letting it cool and I've got to be honest with you guys this really looks like chest squares on top I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece so you can see the inside of it and you can see it's pretty gooey on that knife Now it definitely needs to sit some more so I'm thinking about using this to get it out but that's kind of a small piece so I'm thinking I'm gonna get a fork instead now y'all are gonna have to forgive my presentation skills because um, we're not doing this try to try to win an award <laughs> or some cooking show it is still hot but I just really wanted to show you that how gooey it is on the inside I hope that is coming in clear So yeah, it broke all up, but again, if it sits a little bit longer, it's going to be um, more stabilized, but there it is. I'm very pleased with these results, and you can see, hopefully see right here just how gooey that is. I absolutely love these brownies. Let me know if you try them as well. I would love to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.